Hey folks, Ben Gilbert here from Engadget, and I'm here with Palmer Lucky and Nate Mitchell of Oculus VR, or Oculus Rift, maybe better known as the people with the crazy VR headset. Uh, and we're talking Oculus Share, the latest thing that you guys have, which is the, uh, the developer-based database for uh, searching and uploading your prototypes or your VR things, right? Your programs that, you, that work on the VR Oculus headset. Uh, so can you guys kind of give me a little bit of details on, on what it is and uh, what the plans are for the future with the program? Sure. <laughs> so we just launched Share yesterday. It's a, a new service that we've built for developers to be able to share, upload, discover, browse, download, install all their Oculus content. And the re reasoning behind that was our community was sort of struggling to have a great way to share experiences, really host experiences that they were building, whether they were tech demos, full games, mods, whatever it was. And well, because it's still in beta, right? Like absolutely. it's a beta dev kit, and absolutely. this is very much still and something in progress. Developers were trying to share those demos with each other mostly. It wasn't necessarily that people were trying to sell their Oculus sure. games, but it's like, sure. hey, I built this really cool thing that uses some positional tracking or this, that, and the other. Check it out and give me feedback. And we saw developers looking for better ways to, to share that content and to get feedback. So we set out to build sort of a platform where devs could connect and bring all those demos and cool experiences together and frankly, learn from each other uh, more effectively. Okay, I, I know that in my experience with the VR headset and trying to find stuff, it's been a lot of me pinging other journalists and being like, hey, help, what's cool? <laughs> and looking in forums and whatever else. So this is like a, a great way to gather together all that stuff essentially. Um, and Absolutely. It seems like it's laying the groundwork for the future, though, right? Like we were talking about this a little bit uh, before the, the interview started about uh, where this might proceed for the the retail units, or where it might go for you know going forward with people actually like buying VR games or whatever else. Yeah. So I mean, right now it is basically a developer-oriented platform, but we do we do plan on uh, building it and expanding it so that it is something that consumers can easily use. And actually, part of that is not. Um, it's not just related to you know, adding features to the store. We actually do want to build something that's accessible in VR. Because right now, there's, you have this experience where you have to you know, do things on your monitor and then plug in the Rift and then navigate to games and try to launch them. And especially if, you only, if this is your primary monitor, it's very difficult to actually see the icons sure, and, and sure. all that. I'm sure you've struggled with that experience Absolutely. on your Rift. And so we'd like to make something where people can download stuff and launch it without having to take off the Rift headset, or at least without having to struggle with configuring all their display settings. You know, that, that actually brings up an interesting point, and something I hadn't really considered is a lot of, I mean, I'm used to launching something and then putting on the headset, just because it's still in beta mm -hmm. and whatever else. But for a consumer-facing model, I mean, it, it seems like you're saying you'd want there to be something where you can just put it on and start everything from there, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. What We're ideas are you thinking of on, on that sure. Like, I'm not trying to so get something out of you or whatever. But, yeah. but I, I think Palmer's absolutely right, and you're absolutely right, Ben. What we want is this totally self-contained experience. So right. you buy the Rift, a consumer buys the Rift, right. they put it on, and really they have access to all their Oculus content. They can browse an Oculus store, you know, find content they want to play, all in the headset without taking it off. And that's something that we'll continue to you know, show you more and more of, evolve over time. But having that sort of self-contained experience is really the dream, the vision for our platform. So it scares me about the maybe I open Seamless Web on there and order food absolutely. and never leave I mean, the headset world. Have you read Ready Player One? <laughs> yes, indeed. Just exactly like that. that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think <laughs> this one, is our terrifying future. One of the things a lot of our developers at the office are most excited for is actually apps built in VR. Sure. Sort of like. We've seen VR cinema, right? That's really popular. It's something we're showing here at the show. Mm -hmm. Another great example is telepresence. And we're seeing developers build sort of like telepresence applications. And something that's really exciting is how do we bring all that stuff together so that Rift users can sort of tap into these things and connect with other Rift users in VR. So this is actually something that you guys talked about during your presentation yesterday, right? We're here at the Game Developers Conference in Europe, and you guys were talking about the building custom experiences for VR. And uh, the, I, I thought this was a really apt analogy you gave with the, uh, the wave and the person on the beach. And somebody wants to have that experience being on the surfboard and seeing that experience and being there. And the other person wants to be that person kind of laying on the beach, maybe watching that person get wiped out. Yes. Uh, and it, it's just really interesting to think of all these very different experiences, right? I think that as a, a game player, I approach it very much as, how can I play video games on this thing? But it seems like, like you're saying, there's all these other experiences that work for VR. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. No, okay. I, I, I think, sorry. <laughs> He's got it. We got through to them. Yeah, yeah, actually, you just like 
sounds like my messaging got through. No, good, good. I think what we are sort of like I'm alluding to with sort of telepresence and VR cinema, we're sure. seeing this super wide range of experiences right. from the very, very intense to the very, very relaxing. And I think when we show it to people, you know, kids, young adults, adults, um, older people, you see all these different reactions based on the sort of content they're trying. Like the grandma video is a perfect example. When she tries Tuscany, she just goes bonkers. And sometimes when we show kids talking, they're not that impressed. And sure. But you show them Minecraft or something and they explore their Minecraft castle that they built to scale in VR and they're blown away. And Again, all these different types of content, different intensity levels for different people. And I think what you're going to see, similar to the Xbox One lineup, which we were just discussing before uh, the interview started, where they have all this different content for different age groups, we want to see the same type of thing from VR. From applications, uh, movie watching, where you're just sitting down and relaxing in a movie theater with your friends, to Call of Duty 12. Or sure. Zumba Fitness or VR. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just you dance in VR. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the other thing we were also talking about is uh, the, the kind of Valve tie-in, right? Like this, to me, when I play PC games, that's my go-to spot where everything is and it's collected there and I can easily update games and whatever else. Uh, and as you, as you guys pointed out, the share program is still very much a developer thing and doesn't really have a, doesn't really fit somewhere like Steam quite yet. Uh, but it seems like something that would make sense for the future. But can you, I guess, can you explain why something like that might not fit now versus in the future? Well, I mean, this, Steam is generally made as a kind of consumer-facing game distribution platform. Sure. It's not made as something that anyone can submit a tech demo to and instantly share. There's an approval process. Uh, Greenlight is making it easier for people to get in, but it still takes a lot of time. And probably, if you're a developer who just wants to share a quick demo or an update of where they are in their app, it's just not the right kind of portal right now. As we start to move towards a consumer version, you know, who, who knows where things will go, we have no plans to ever lock the Rift down. We want to make it easy for people to download games and launch games, but we're not going to make it so that they can only do that through our platform. And all, right now, there's already a lot of games that are on Steam that you can play in the Rift, like sure. Strike Suit Zero or Half-Life 2 or Team Fortress 2. Those are only available, all, that's the only way to buy the, the VR compatible versions of those games. Uh, and that's great, you know, people enjoy doing that. So. I think we're going to have to figure yeah. it out. It's way too early to say For sure. exactly how we would like it to work because I don't really know. But we do and want... And like, Steam does allow you to add like non-Steam games and you know, maybe potentially we could have something where you can add non-share games or something like that. You know, sure. who, who knows how it would all end up. But something Palmer touched on there, which is really important, is that our vision is this open platform where indies can right. self-publish. You can bring any sort of Rift experience that you create to the, the wider community. And this is really just the first step in building that broader platform. And that also that speaks to the the Android approach that you guys have talked about. Yeah. Right? That's the when you guys have talked about mobile or you talked about PC. You haven't when you talked about the future. You haven't talked about consoles. You've mm -hmm. been like, those exist, <laughs> but PC and <laughs> mobile is where show. we think it's at. Right. Well, PC is uh, where it is at right now. At that's, very that, least. that's the most po powerful platform that you can get. That's the sure. easiest thing for developers to use. But I think mobile is moving so quickly. It's becoming so powerful so fast. Some people, they when they hear us talk about mobile, they're like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to play, you know, social Facebook games on my in VR. It's like, no, that's not what we're thinking. We're thinking actual real VR experiences. It's just that mobile hardware is getting so powerful so fast. You can imagine a future five, ten years from now, where anything you can do on a desktop PC today can be done on mobile hardware. And sure, sure you're probably sure. going to be able to have a better experience on a really powerful desktop rig because you just have a much higher power and thermal budget to work with. But if there are some, some experiences that are very compelling that only take mobile hardware that's, you know, not quite as powerful as desktop hardware, then it could be really cool if you can actually build some of that mobile hardware. Like, imagine it being built into the headset and being able to run things without being dependent on a big sure. giant box plugged into a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, frankly, we're already there today, where we're at the You can run some things. You can run things that are actually good. Now, they're not high graphical fidelity. They're not going to sure. have all these crazy effects. But you can run something at a high frame rate in stereo 3D that is fun on mobile hardware today. And if you have mobile hardware that gets two, three, four, five, see 16 times more powerful, then you're actually going to be at the point where you can sh deliver good looking, really fun VR experiences. Okay, well I'm looking forward to five to ten years from now, I guess, on that, <laughs> Me in too. that respect. Yeah. It's, I guess it's hard, to, it's hard to think of though, right? Like, because what you're saying is, is absolutely the truth. When, when you use Android or iPhone or whatever mobile product now, the games that you play there are different, right? You're playing a game that you might want to pick up for a second on the train or play in the bathroom or whatever else, mm -hmm. and the graphical fidelity isn't there, and it doesn't feel like a console experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but as, as things have started progressing, like the Ouya, the Shield, or whatever else, it seems like that stuff is getting there, yeah. right? Well, it's getting there, and it's moving super fast. Sure. And unlike a console, they can continue to get more and more powerful. Like a console, 
it launches, and then it's relatively fixed for somewhere between five years and a decade. So you don't want to be in a situation where, uh, like imagine if we were to release you know, some platform, like there's people who say, you should release your own console, the Oculus console, and it would launch with the Rift or something. But that wouldn't make sense to do because we'd launch hardware, and then what do we do like five or six years from now when it's weaker than everyone's mobile phone, sure. and it's weaker than everyone's PC by a huge margin. It just well, wouldn't. you release one annually, that's the solution. <laughs> that is one solution, but. <laughs> Probably that's, not that's the mobile solution. solution. <laughs> uh, so the one last thing I wanted to touch on was uh, Oculus as a as as a what is this company, right? Like I think of Oculus as a hardware company right now because you guys have a Oculus headset, but you talk about your guys as a developer, right? Like, and when I think of a developer, I mean I'm thinking like. Uh, you know, a game developer, right? Like a big studio. Are you guys, you guys do have software development internally because of the SDK and stuff, but like, are you developing games internally for Oculus? Like, I don't. Uh, it depends so on how you define games. As to what games. you want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm not trying to make it uncomfortable. No, absolutely. We actually consider ourselves a weird blend between software and hardware. Okay. Some people in the company, I think for good reason, actually consider us more of a software company. We have more software developers on staff. And, and really the reasoning behind that is that the hardware, you don't need a huge hardware team to, to pull off the rift, right? Sure. And even some of the other projects we have cooking up, we can do with that small group. And not a small group, but the really talented group of people. Software, when you start to talk about, okay, how do we build share? What are the other services that a platform like VR needs? Sure. How do we build the absolute best platform for gamers? You need a lot of software engineers. And I think content is a great question too. Should Oculus build content? That's something we've been looking at and talking to many developers about. Who wants to be involved in that sort of thing? So for us, software is a huge focus. And I think a big part of that is because software sells hardware. We really sure, believe course. that without a great software experience, the hardware just isn't that exciting. So our focus in a big way is the software side of things. And okay. also, that's a lot of where the magic happens to make all the rift, right. you know, possible. Of course. Especially around things like mobile. It's not just, you don't just build a headset and everything works? That, <laughs> not, I thought that's I would, not quite. <laughs> and we really do need that, you know, some kind sure. of killer app, if, you know, to really sell people and where they instantly get it. Like a lot of the people I think who are interested in the rift right now are people who already understand kind of what the future of VR could be. They're like, ah, I understand. I've, you know, seen lots of science fiction movie and I've played lots of video games, so I understand where this is all going. But for people who maybe they don't fully understand all of that, you really need a killer app where they can try and say, ah, I see, this is actually something I could not do before that now I can do. Okay, so the last thing, the consumer model, 2014, was that we heard? What have we been saying? We've what been saying, saying months, not years. Yes, we haven't announced the release date. It's right. coming. I mean, we're the release date will not be measured in multiples of years from now. <laughs> We're doing okay. really well uh, on that side of things. Excellent. So okay. we'll have more news. Well, I'm excited to hear more. Thanks. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Absolutely. And thank you, Internet.